Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead's Micro Moment Monday, where today we are going to talk about the tools that we use when we uh, cook and bake off-grid using a Dutch oven. Now, Jim and I are starting a new series. It's going to be five videos. Three of them will be on Rose Red, and two of them will be over on Trail Grazers because they will be while we are traveling where we are going to show breakfast, lunch, and dinner on a specific piece of equipment. And the purpose for these is to show you the versatility of what you could do with that piece of equipment. In this case, it's a Dutch oven. If the grid was down and we had to rely totally on that piece of equipment for preparing our meals. Now, our greenhouse fan goes off and on, so you may hear that in the background. Here is our setup, part of our outdoor kitchen. Now, some of the things that I'm going to talk about I think are um, essential, and some are just good to have. And so, and, and I will give you my opinion on which is which. For us, this little cook table is absolutely essential. Jim and I are in our late 70s. Well, one of us is later than others. I married a younger man. <laughs> He's a cougar. <laughs> I fell for <laughs> And so this cook table is very essential for us. It may not be for you. If you're young and agile, go for it. You can get down on your hands and knees and cook on the ground if you wish or over a fire or whatever. But for us, this cook table is essential. And we have a second one that we're going to be putting into uh, service here really soon. Then, of course, the next thing you're going to need is a Dutch oven. And when you cook over charcoal the way we do, Various sizes of Dutch ovens are pretty important if you want versatility. I have found that this is a deep 12 inch. I also have a shallow 12 inch. I have a 10 inch and I have a 16 inch. And then I have some without legs that I use in other places. But having a variety of Dutch, of uh, cast iron things that you can cook uh, using is great. Now we are not cooking anything in this one. We just finished a bake and I just used the leftover charcoal to put up here as a um, prop to show you that when you cook, you have charcoal on the bottom and charcoal on the top. Let me start, I should have started with this one. The most essential thing besides the Dutch oven itself is to have heat proof gloves. This is so important. I've tried to do without them and have been burned, so please take good care of yourself by having a good pair of um, heat-proof gloves. Then, for manipulating the lid, um, a lid lifter is really a good thing. Now, we started off with this lid lifter, and my brother-in-law, John, took one look at one of our videos where I was trying to manage a lid using this thing and you can see obviously that it doesn't balance well, it tips back and forth. And bless his heart, he immediately sent me this one. This one, you fit right under the handle and then you squeeze and it's set up to where you hold it perfectly level. This is such a great thing to have. And then another thing that is not absolutely essential but we have found quite handy is this little lid rest. You can also, I have some Dutch ovens that do not have legs that I can put on top of this little lifter, put charcoal underneath, and it's as good as if they did have lids. But this lid lifter, uh, this lid holder, is a great place to put a hot lid so that you do not have to put it down on the dirt. Rocks can do the same thing. So it's not essential, but it's very handy to have. Another essential tool from my perspective is these long necked grabbers. What are these things called? Tongs. Tongs. I just call them grabbers. Very, very handy because it takes your hand away from the heat a little bit. Now, In the bottom of this 12-inch Dutch oven, I have this little rack. 
This came from one of my canners, but you can buy racks individually on Amazon or many other places too. Um, when I want to bake bread or bake a casserole or something that I'm not just putting it bare in the Dutch oven, but rather I'm putting it in a container that then goes in the Dutch oven, I want a little bit of airspace on the bottom to prevent burning. So it goes right there. This is also great for handling the coals, for lifting the coals up and putting them on the lid or putting them underneath. This is a great little tool. We think that this is essential. This is a little chimney for starting the charcoal. It is very, very efficient. You put um, kindling or paper or whatever you want here and the charcoal in here and it creates a chimney effect and just gets those going really, really fast. Do you absolutely have to have one of these? No, you don't. You can use chunks of charcoal from a wood fire if you prefer. Or you can make one of these using a number 10 can and a triangular punch can opener for air holes. But we love that. Now I want to show you a couple of other things that are essential as far as I'm concerned for baking. When I do a round loaf of bread, a bull, bull as it is called, I use a pie tin. Well, trying to put a pie tin in a hot Dutch oven, because we always preheat the Dutch oven before we do baking, is asking for disaster. Even if we put a heat glove on, that heat glove is going to cause us to punch into the bread. So I don't like that at all. And so I have made this sling out of tin foil. It's three layers deep, and I just put the bread in the pan, put the sling under the pan, and then I am able to lower it into the Dutch oven, putting the outside edges on, and then putting the lid on top. And I can do that without gloves on because I'm far enough away from the Dutch oven that I'm protected. And then when we get ready to remove that bread, then we just take off the lid. Now these are hot, so I would put gloves on to do this and remove the bread this way. And if you, instead of doing a round loaf, want to do a standard loaf, I do it the same way. With a sling, lowering it into the Dutch oven. For accuracy and the best results possible, with cooking in a Dutch oven, it is good to know what the temperature is. This has a probe, you can stick this probe in meat, you can stick it in bread, you can just lay it in the oven itself to get the temperature. I usually just drop it right in the oven as I'm preheating so that I know when it gets up to 400 degrees or 425, then I can put my bread in. This has a magnetic strip on the back and so it is easily just placed right on the, uh, the wind guard. <clears throat> Those are the basic tools that we use when we are cooking and baking with a Dutch oven. This next video is going to be our first video of the five, and it will be uh, launched in a couple of days, and it will be all about breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a Dutch oven. So I hope you look forward to this series and that you'll follow through with it. And then the whole idea is for all of us to be thinking about how we might be successful in cooking meals off-grid. And then we start acquiring the equipment that we might need. Now, will you need everything that we show? Absolutely not. We have redundancy systems that we like. And we have a trip scheduled, a trailer trip scheduled with John and Cindy, where they are going to be doing one of the videos as well. So this should be a fun series. And I hope that you will watch both on Rose Red Homestead and then pop over to Trail Grazers when we show those. And I will let you know when those are too. So thank you for being with us for this Micro Moment Monday. And we will see you again next week with another Micro Moment. Mm -hmm.